Good afternoon uh, and welcome everyone to our sixth and final wheelhouse talk of the academic year and our Peter C. Cook Leadership Academy graduation. A special welcome to the friends, family, and colleagues of our CLA graduates who are joining us both in person and virtually today to celebrate the newest class of CLA fellows. For those of you who I have not yet had the pleasure to meet, my name is Abby Sachs and I serve as the program manager for the Peter C. Cook Leadership Academy and I will also be your MC for tonight's event. I would like to take a moment to share what these students have accomplished this year. Through over 60 hours of intentional self-reflection, mentorship, and learning from both their peers and community leaders, our fellows have committed to building themselves to be more ethical, effective leaders, just as our founders, Ralph Hauenstein and Peter Cook, envisioned when they founded the Academy. With a focus on the six competencies of responsibility for personal behavior, empathy, providing and receiving feedback, advocating for a point of view, and power dynamics, our fellows are now better equipped to lead and serve in their communities. I'm now pleased to introduce one of our outstanding students, Genevieve Mary, who will be introducing our alumna speaker this afternoon, who also happens to be her CLA mentor. Genevieve Mary is a junior at Grand Valley State University studying public and nonprofit administration with a minor in sociology. As a first year fellow candidate, she has been excited to develop her skills as a leader by learning from others, networking within the community, and exploring what her life could look like after college. Genevieve is currently a member and on the e-board of Students Leaving a Mark and Hunger and Homelessness at Grand Valley. Outside of coursework and school organizations, she's passionate about spreading kindness, making time for friends and family, doing crafts, and volunteering. She hopes to continue her vision of making a difference. After undergrad, Genevieve isn't sure where she will be, but she hopes to work with increasing food security for underserved communities. Please join me in welcoming Genevieve to the stage. I'm so grateful to be able to introduce our speaker for tonight, who is a wonderful mentor, leader, person, and friend, Dana Erdley. I'd like to give some background about her to start. Dana graduated from GVSU in 2016 with a degree in interdisciplinary studies with an emphasis in food systems. She began her career working with Access of West Michigan's Farm to Pantry program, the Detroit Black Community Food Security Network's D-Town Farms, and Local First's Eat Local campaign. Dana currently serves as the executive director of the Fulton Street Farmers Market with the goal of building a more resilient and equitable, equitable food systems in West Michigan. Dana finds inspiration in working alongside the market's creative and driven community. Dana was also a member of the Cook Leadership Academy and is now, as I mentioned, a wonderful, wonderful mentor. I'm incredibly lucky to be able to learn from Dana and I hope you all can take something away from her tonight. So please help me in welcoming Dana to the stage. It is an honor to be here with you all tonight as we celebrate the graduating class of 2023. Thank you so much, Genevieve, for that thoughtful introduction. Um, it has been such a joy working with Genevieve over the past semester and really diving back into what I gained out of the Cook Leadership Academy, what are the lessons that I'm bringing with me as I continue to lead in our community? What are the things that are really resonant in reflecting back to 2016 when I was graduating? Um, so it's been a lot of fun to hang out with Genevieve and kind of get to learn her leadership journey and reflect on my own. So I'm excited to be able to share some of those takeaways with you all tonight. Um, so a little bit of background about me. I came to Grand Valley in a very um, or unorthodox way. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and I knew that I wanted to move to West Michigan to be closer to family, but didn't know anything about the academics, didn't know any of the schools. Um, so I was just looking online, and I had stumbled upon Grand Valley, and I had seen that on the homepage there was um, a uh, like advertisement talking about the sustainable agriculture project, so the student farm at Grand Valley. And I immediately was like, okay, well that's pretty cool because I had done some farming um, as an internship when I was in high school and I knew that I was fascinated by the intersections of health, community, um, you know, getting people involved in agriculture, understanding what they're putting in their bodies, that sort of thing. So I decided that that was enough for me to just make a decision for my undergraduate degree and came to Grand Valley. And so the first 
uh, Friday that I had gone to the volunteer hours, I realized that the photographer who had done the homepage uh, advertisement was phenomenal because it was not what it had been displayed to be. It definitely was a work in progress and it was, you know, very much new. Um, it was under-resourced and there weren't a lot of people who knew about it. In fact, still to this day, even though it's grown tremendously in its impact, a lot of students don't know about it. And so this gave me an awesome opportunity to be able to be a part of the farm at a really critical time and find my way as a leader through running volunteer hours, um, connecting students from all different walks of life and backgrounds to the work of the farm. And it was at that time that I decided that this work was too important for me to let go of. I was hoping to choose a more traditional path for my education, but decided that there was no reason to try and fail at something that I didn't love as much as I loved food systems. And so I studied liberal studies with a food systems um, emphasis. And you can imagine calling my father to tell him that that was the direction I was going as a first generation student. Um, it didn't go over so well initially, but he's come, uh, come along uh, to see the value in it. Um, but as you all have experienced in your own path, choosing your passion scares people. It's a lot more comfortable to choose the path that is prescribed, the path that is known, the path that we know other people who have taken that, those steps, the path with health insurance. Um, that's something that I'm still working on in my leadership journey. Um, but I realized that choosing that path, you know, either way, it was like, if I fail, I fail, but I knew that the, the passion and the drive was there um, and there was no way to, to turn back once I had kind of acknowledged that within myself. So that was my first year of college and then I was very fortunate in 2013 to join the Leadership Academy. And at that time, um, I was just enamored by the community. I was working alongside students from so many different backgrounds and walks of life. And I finally found all of the other people who were choosing the path that no one else had followed, right? And so I, through the leadership talks, through our reflections, um, through working with mentors, and I really was able to hone in on my story and the why behind what I was doing. And I feel so strongly that the leadership skills that I gained through the Cook Leadership Academy allowed me to have confidence to step into a field that it basically didn't exist and to step into a career that was kind of undefined. Um, another piece of the Leadership Academy that I can't help but, you know, reminisce on all the time was the um, international travel that it had afforded me. So I went to India and studied um, food systems and looked at Buddhist ethics as they apply to the Ladakhi food system. Once in a lifetime opportunity that I've been able to bring back, you know, so much of what I learned in that space to West Michigan. And it's helped me to be, you know, a better leader to be able to understand how interconnected our food system is. Um, get, it really allowed me to get down in the dirt alongside other farmers and understand some of the challenges that were being faced um, by the communities that we're, we were working with there. And so the CLA not only gave me the leadership skills that I was looking for, but also helped me to see my work through so many different lenses. And I carry that with me to this day, and it's helped me so much in decision making. Um, so today I'm the executive director of the Fulton Street Farmers Market. It was not an easy path to get here. It was not straightforward. And I'll be totally candid with you that um, about two years after graduation, I had determined that I had completely failed on my mission to do food systems in West Michigan. Um, I was working a job that was not fulfilling for me and it was not fueling my soul in the way that all the other work that I had done before had. And I thought to myself like, man, all of those people were right. You know, I took the path that I, you know, I knew it was a risk and I have failed. And so I think a big piece of that too was not only had I felt like I failed, but I had um, really tied up my identity and my work, right? So not only did I feel like, man, I didn't get the career path that I wanted, but I felt like who even am I if I'm not working in the field that fuels my soul? And so it was a really tough time, but it's something that I think is really important to talk about as we talk about leadership and failure and how we get to where we're going because um, through that period, I was able to really dig deep and figure out, okay, what are my last ditch efforts at trying to make this career path work? And you know, when do I call it quits? And it was just on the precipice of me calling it quits that I decided that I had come across the job at the Fulton Street Farmers Market. And 
I took a pay cut. I lost those health insurance benefits that I had at my previous role, but I knew that it was going to be the opportunity that allowed me to put everything that I had learned and studied into practice and out into the community. Um, and I have not looked back. It has been an absolute joy to be there. Um, I get to work with hundreds of entrepreneurs every year. I get to face new challenges every season. Um, I get to create a space where our community can come together across our differences and get to know each other and just celebrate the goodness that the West Michigan agricultural community brings to us. Um, so it has been just an amazing journey, um, and I'm so thankful that I have landed there, especially after thinking that it was all for nothing. Um, so some of the lessons that have been learned along the way that I wanted to highlight tonight, um, one is keep the people. You know, we are in a global economy, and we are all moving and changing careers. We're changing cities. Um, there's so much that is fluid right now, but when you find someone that you look up to, whether it be a mentor or a colleague or, you know, someone in the community who you really trust and respect, hold on to them with everything that you have, because no matter where you go, to be able to go back to the people who you really respect, the people who can call you out when you're wrong. I have a lot of those around me, and I appreciate them greatly. One of them is in the audience. Um, that has been invaluable to me because I see that, you know, wherever I go, I know that I have an ecosystem of support. So even if I fall flat on my face, I know that I will have my people that I can call um, for consult, call for help, or call to just say, man, this situation is terrible. What do you think? Um, my next um, lesson would be take risks and keep moving. We will all fail and there's no way around it. And so when we own that failure and we own the fact that you don't always get what you want. It doesn't, the plan doesn't always go the way that you had intended. People won't always react the way that you anticipate, but we've got to keep moving. You know, there's no way for us to live the lives that we want without taking risks and without challenging ourselves. And so just finding a way to kind of flex that muscle of when I fail, I do X. Like I've got my whole routine. When I fall flat on my face, I know who I call, I know what I do. And I think being able to really own that for myself as a practice has helped me tremendously in being able to be resilient and say, you know, if you're going to lead anything, you're going to make mistakes. So how do we move forward and learn from that? Um, my next piece would be trusting your intuition. So that is something that the further along I get, the more I value. I'm seeing that my friends and colleagues who have practices that bring them back to themselves, whether it be for some people working out, for some people journaling, for some people, you know, taking a hike is my, my go-to. But what are the practices that ground you and help you to really tune into your intuition? Because your intuition at the end of the day is another tool that allows you to make those decisions on the fly when you're not sure, when you don't have all the facts, but you have to make a choice anyway, you know, having a really strong sense of self and a really strong sense of your values and what, what you would do, how you would make decisions with your community. I always, when I make decisions at the farmer's market, if I'm on my own, I always think, okay, what would my staff say? What would the board say? What would these particular vendors say? And it just allows you to make sure that you're following your values, you're staying true to who you are, and that you're honoring what it, your intuition is telling you. Um, my last lesson is stay in awe, which is something that I've been really compelled by. There's a lot of great research right now about the value of staying in awe. So as we all know, y'all are stepping out into a world with incredibly complex problems ahead, and you all have a passion and a drive to solve those problems, but none of the answers are going to be simple, right? And when we think about staying in awe, whether that be of our environment, being in awe of ourselves, in awe of one another, that allows us that creativity to be able to see what is possible. Because the solutions that we need to face the, the problems that we're facing as a society right now, uncharted territory, right? And we don't have the answers, but we do know that when we trust one another and when we see that when we work together and, and actualize all of our potential, we can find solutions to some of these grandiose concerns that we're all trying to face. And so staying in awe and just recognizing the interconnectedness that we all share, recognizing that there are answers in nature, there are answers in one another, um, 
you all are about to go out into the workforce and it gives me so much joy to think about um, how you're going to be able to bring everything that you've learned through the CLA and the Howenstein Center and your undergraduate work out into the world um, with you. And so with that, I just want to say to all of you tonight, congratulations. You worked hard and studied and you dreamed and you chased that. Um, you did so in the midst of a pandemic, and I can't fathom what that would have <laughs> been like for me um, when I was an undergraduate. You all have faced so much already and have been able to thrive through it. And so I just am really excited for you all to step out into the world. And I thank everyone else who's here who has helped our graduates get to where they are tonight. Um, the Howenstein Center has done an incredible job of cultivating a community that goes far beyond the walls of Grand Valley. And we will all be here cheering you on as you bring what you've learned here um, out into the world with you. So with that, I would just want to say congratulations. Thank you so much, Dana, for, for sharing those um, life lessons that you've learned along the way. I really resonated with a lot of them and really love that the work that you're doing finds that intersectionality between entrepreneurship, community service. It really highlights the need for um, an understanding of and a curiosity about different perspectives and viewpoints and life experiences that I think these students really leaned into um, this year. So we often talk about the impact of Ralph Hauenstein and Peter C. Cook uh, and the legacy they built with the founding of the Hauenstein Center for Presidential Studies and the Peter C. Cook Leadership Academy. They are two powerhouses that we talk about all the time and we could go on, on and on for days about them. Um, however, I know there are many of you who may not be as familiar with these two gentlemen. Um, so there's no one better to share about their lives and legacies than our very own director, Megan Rydecki. Megan Rydecki joined the Howenstein Center as its director in January of 2023. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and a Master's in Public Administration, both from Grand Valley State University. During her time at Grand Valley, she was a member of the inaugural class of CLA Fellows. And prior to joining the Howenstein Center, Megan spent time in the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, serving at the City of Wyoming, International City County Management Association, The Right Place, CQL, and most recently, Consumers Energy. Her community involvement is extensive, highlighted by service to Grand Rapids Whitewater, the Grand Rapids Public Museum, and the Board of Trustees at Grand Valley State University. These experiences have allowed Megan to recognize the leadership potential in everyone, and she is dedicated to empowering the next generation of leaders for the betterment of the world. So please join me in welcoming Megan. Thanks for the intro, Abby. And Dana, thank you again for the beautiful message tonight. Um, I'm sure it will resonate with everyone here. And when we all shop at the market, because we all do that here, we will think of you fondly um, and, you know, um, pass along well wishes for the great leadership you're showing there. So thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks for letting me share tonight on this very momentous occasion. Um, it's my privilege to serve as the director of the Hallenstein Center for Presidential Studies. And as a fellow Cook Leadership Academy alum, I have my lapel pin to prove it. Um, I'm thrilled to extend my best wishes to all of you and to our graduating class tonight. We are so proud of how you, far you've come on your own leadership journeys. These days, it's common to hear and use the phrase, I stand on the shoulder of giants, in the context of both uplifting others and being uplifted by others. I imagine everyone in this room can think of individuals in our lives who have helped us along in our journeys. Um, and I actually want to encourage you to take a moment to mentally thank those people right now. In researching the phrase, standing on the shoulders of giants, I found that the original metaphor actually means using the understanding gained by major thinkers who have gone before in order to make intellectual progress. I'll say that again. Using the understanding gained by major thinkers who have gone before in order to make intellectual progress. It dates back to the 12th century, but is most commonly taken from a letter written by Isaac Newton in 1675, in which he expresses, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And so it is with this context that I'd like us to reflect on two giants in the world of the Hauenstein Center for Presidential Studies, Colonel Ralph Hauenstein and Peter Cook, and what it means to stand on their shoulders. As many of you know, Ralph Hounstein served in many roles in his life. He was a newspaper editor, army officer, entrepreneur, business leader, and philanthropist. 
Very recently, we also learned he was a movie extra, and if you watch The Godfather 2, he's there somewhere in the background, having acquainted himself with Al Pacino and Martin Scorsese at his favorite breakfast spot in the Dominican Republic, where he owned a manufacturing facility. So for any of you tonight, if you go home and you watch this and you find him, uh, we will have a nice Howenstein prize for you if you report back uh, where it is in the movie that you see him. Similarly, Peter Cook was an accountant, auto importer, entrepreneur, business leader, investor, and philanthropist. While his most notable business dealings involved negotiating some of the earliest rights to sell Volkswagen, Porsche, Audi, and Mazda in the Midwest, he was also a crucial player in the founder's brewing story, having lent them funding when they were on the verge of shuttering their business. The two were best friends, and together they exuded some of the best thinking that West Michigan has been privy to over the years. They worked hard, they took chances, they saw the opportunities coming well before they arrived, and all with a greater goal in mind. In Ralph's 2004 commencement address at GVSU, after receiving an honorary degree, he said, I contend that if you are going to be a leader, if you are going to serve your community and your country, then you must not be timid or resigned to come what may. You must take the future into your own hands to the extent that you are able. You must work to turn the odds in your favor. And so, with these words in mind, I encourage you to consider what it means to stand on the shoulders of Ralph and Peter, to build on their understanding of the world, of business, of community building and philanthropy, to serve others, to make progress and create meaningful change. What does their work mean for the choices you make and the ways you show up in the world? What brilliance does this require from each of you, the brilliance that we know lies within each of you? These are the legacies of Colonel Ralph Houndstein and Peter C. Cook, and the ability to learn from them, iterate on their best attributes, and put them back into work is the hallmark of a Peter C. Cook Leadership Academy Fellow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, I always love hearing about Ralph and Peter. Truly, the more you learn about them, um, the more I realize that we really do have two excellent guiding North Stars um, in these two men and their impacts in the community, nation, and world. So here we are having spent some time learning from some incredible community leaders and about some incredible community leaders. And there's nothing left but to move on to the official celebration of our emerging community leaders. Uh, upon acceptance into the CLA, when they start in the fall semester, students are bestowed the title of fellow candidate. And this reflects that the students are on a journey of learning and developing themselves as leaders. And upon successful completion of their time in the CLA, they move from fellow candidates to fellows. I'm excited and heartened to be welcoming a new class of students into the collective of CLA fellows who have come before them. Uh, I now have the staff who will be assisting me with the ceremony on stage, and I would also like our graduates to begin filing from their seats to the side of the auditorium. You can wait until your row is released. Um, you already know Megan, but I also want to introduce you to M. McKenna Makala, who serves as the CLA program coordinator. M joined our team in October of 2022, actually on Halloween, very spooky. And she is a GVSU alum uh, from the fine arts program who has brought incredible talent and energy to the CLA. Graduates, when you hear your name, uh, please cross the stage to receive your diploma and stole from Megan and M. And once you cross the stage, you can line up along the opposite wall by our associate director, Brent Holmes. I am now honored to read the names of our class of 2023 CLA graduates. Hannah Beatis. You can clap, that's fine. I love it. Matthew Bristol. Jeremy Burns. Kiasha Cargill.
Dawson Coates. No, you have to keep coming. Lydia Cooper. <laughs> Megan Healy. <laughs> Emma Loveland. You go, you go this way. No, you're great. Michelle Luciano. <laughs> Jocelyn Medina. <laughs> Brady Mills. Joseph Ohaeche. Mm -hmm. David Pivik. <laughs> Evan Potter. Adam Prelip. <laughs> Anamika Risal. <laughs> Megan Scott. Noah Stefan. <laughs> Ezri Sutter. <laughs> Catherine Thornton. Christina Van. <laughs> Jesse Webb. <laughs> Amanda Witzeman. Olivia Witzeman. I would also like to read the names of our students who are graduating but are unable to join us in person today. If you could hold your applause toward the end, we'll do a big round of applause for them. Charlotte Doran, Faith Kidd, Mason Kolonowski, Mary Claire Mimers, Ali Mohammed, Kimberly Nutt, Joseph Osterman, and Aiden Takis. All right, because this is a graduation and we cannot clap enough, I am pleased to present our 2023 CLA fellow graduates. Please join me in giving them one more big round of applause. Fellows, it has been an honor to learn with and from each of you this year and for some of you from the years before. Um, I'm excited for what you'll accomplish in the years to come. Using some of the phrasing that, that Dana used, I am in awe of you, and I know that the world is a brighter place for having you in it. And I'm very excited for the people who will get to meet you along your journey. 
We'll now move into the true celebration of our graduates. Our grads will first be whisked away by Brent to a grad photo, but then uh, we will invite you all to join us out in the exhibition hall for food and refreshments. Congratulations again to our graduates. Thank you all for joining us in person and virtually, and I look forward to seeing you all at the reception. Thank you. Thank you.